studios we today. We have, and it's Isatel. 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 Isatel Dutra. 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 Isatel what, Dutra. What a beautiful name. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she is an entrepreneur, or she likes to be referred to as the Empower Herpreneur. All right. And um, Isatel started her brand, Bold Beauty by Isatel, with a passion to see women empowered to live boldly, beautiful, and passionately. She accomplishes this twofold through her partnerships with uh, Seagrants International. She consults women one-on-one at events on how to put their best face forward with smudge proof, waterproof, and anti-aging cosmetics and skin care. And she coaches women who want to build their own empire and legacy through her business. Despite being born legally uh, blind, it's Isatel learned early on in life that she had to be tenacious about overcoming obstacles, whether it was forgiving her Foraging her own path to be the first in her family to attend a four-year college, doing whatever it took to study and work overseas while graduating from the University of California, Riverside, to now using her business as a way to serve and bring hope, love, and joy to women and the marginalized internationally. Presently, Isatel is preparing for a three-month serving opportunity where she will help lead short-term teams doing humanitarian work in Southeast Asia. Wow, I'm impressed. Welcome. Thank you Welcome so much. Welcome to the Business Zone, Isatel. It we is are... such an honor to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And your background is just absolutely amazing. amazing. Yeah. Um, and being that this is um, celebrating women, and we di- generally do overcome a lot of obstacles to become successful. Yes. And so you had both being a female and as well as some physical obstacles that you had to overcome. So tell us more about yourself. Okay, well, you know, I was raised by a single mom of four kids. So when you were going on about how women, you know, are the CEOs of their home, I saw that first and foremost. I think that's a lot of my entrepreneurial spirit and passions have come from seeing seeing my single mother do whatever it took to raise all four of us kids. Three out of four are college graduates. My younger sister is actually getting her master's. Oh, okay. And just growing up seeing my mom, you know, um, playing with makeup and just loving that creative expression to make her feel better. I've seen her, you know, do Avon back in the day, and I feel like that, just helping her out with stamping the forms, with um, putting things together, just seeing, wow, like, she's building her own business. She's doing something that she's not working a a typical nine-to-five job. Right. And just something in me is just always been driven. I just knew that I wanted to go to a university. Nobody in my family went. It wasn't something that was really brought up. Uh Uh-huh. I just knew I had to go, and it wasn't really much of an option, so... Um, in high school, I just got myself in the honors classes, college prep, figured it out. And I tell people, that's the one benefit of growing up with lower income. My bachelor's degree was completely paid for. <laughs> well, yeah, there that you was go. completely paid for. And here I thought I was lower income. <laughs> not because you still got a school loan. I still got a student loan here. I got over 50 grand. I'm going, what <laughs> Man, I'm from the hood. <laughs> not, not. <laughs> so, um, legally blind, you yes. you can see. So, when I was born, the optic nerves mm-hmm. that connect the eye to the brain weren't fully developed. Mm. Okay. So, nothing that really glasses could do can make a difference. Believe me, they tried and fit me with everything. Um, so, really, I can see just about everything. Like I could see your white, you know, beautiful white cream sweater. Mm-hmm. I can, but I wouldn't be able to see the small details or seeing writing from a board from far away okay but you know what i was so equipped with so many resources and teachers and tools okay and i just learned to be resourceful right. okay figured out whatever it took to make things happen yeah so That's if i had amazing. to carry if i had to carry like one textbook would be like six volumes of a large print book mm. and make that happen if it was you know college and using uh, adaptive technology to be able to see the board or get note takers even to this day thank god for cell phones with cameras if I need to see something on this, you know, the menu from far away, I can just pull out my phone and zoom in. <laughs> oh, wow. It's the largest. So, that yeah. you see, so see that it. forces her to develop these additional skills. Right. Because we wouldn't be thinking about that, but she thought well, about Well, yeah, because what know? do they say? You usually, your other senses just yes. become more enhanced yes. because you have to, be, you have to, right? Yeah. You right. have to depend on them to be your eyes. Yeah. Where you wouldn't have as those those of us that have um, mm-hmm. all our sight. We that's the only thing that we depend upon. Right. Yeah. So I think I just learned from a young age to just be resourceful. If I wanted something, I'd figure out how to make it happen. Yes. And 
even to this day, just figuring out what use resources are available to us because there's so many. Right. So even just like ta- I'm taking the uh, Business Management Academy course right. that Gilbert's teaching with the National Latina Business Women's Association. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, whatever I can learn and add to my skill set right. to better serve others in my community, to better serve my team and just see, you know, prepare myself for future future opportunities. And, and that's exactly what I meant by women doing what we need to do <laughs> exactly. to become successful. Right. Oh, yes. Because a lot of people that would have stopped them. Right. Yeah. You know, you'd be more the victim and, and mm-hmm. not be able to reach out to mm-hmm. get uh, to reach your goals right. or, or to live a purpose driven life yes. uh, because, you know, this obstacle keeps me from doing that. And I got to tell you, you know, in the business management academy that I'm teaching right now for the National Latina Business Women Association, she's one of my better students. Really? Yes. Because when we were when we were developing the business model, we're building her business model and all the other students students in their their business model she was the one that was contributing a lot more than everybody else really yes it was amazing the ideas she came up with the the the, the thought processes the examples it was just phenomenal oh wow i think you have to know what, how you best process the new new information some people are introspective they could think and meditate on it for a long period of time i'm a verbal processor yes. i love to brainstorm yes. okay. so when we get the creative juices flowing in that respect and getting the examples i'm like okay i i see i, I connect the dots i'm seeing the bigger picture yeah as a woman i'm seeing the bigger picture and seeing what i've been trained like with the company i work with senegence international uh-huh They have provided us with so much resources and training and equipping Uh from so many women that are leading million dollar, two million, five dollar, five million dollar organizations that I can take and learn what's been helpful for them, what what worked for them, what didn't work, what works for me. And just learning from Joni Rogers Conte, the CEO, she's she was a single mother. She was a single mother. She came from another network marketing company Mm -hmm. and she wanted to start a business of products that really worked, that business plan that really worked. Because there's a lot of businesses out there that the compensation plan is you're not really making money unless you're recruiting tens of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so she started this in 1999 as a single mom. And it's grown to probably like almost, I think they might be planning to do like a billion dollars in sales. Wow. And it's in, you know, three or four different continents. And so, or I'm sorry, three or four different countries. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yes, they may be. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it actually, it's kind of interesting because when you look at Avon and you look at Mary Kay and 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 the it, and this particular company, yeah, uh, they they were created for women to mm-hmm. help give provide them with independence. Yeah. Right? Yes. yes. A- and also their beauty products, so they're working with not just your exterior but mm-hmm. your interior. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I think. I read a con- I read something that was so profound to me. I think network marketing is personal development with a product attached. Mm-hmm. So, so many people go into network marketing saying, "Oh, well, you know, I'll just try and ask a few friends, and if it doesn't work, then I can easily toss it." Cause they only put in a few bucks. Mm-hmm. But I think when you really go deep and delve deep and do the work and seeing that, you know what. I can do this. Yeah. Other women, just like me, maybe they're a, a stay-at-home mom. Maybe they're a woman that's sick and tired of the nine-to-five grind and wants to go do humanitarian mm-hmm. work, wants to make a better, bigger impact in the in the lives and in the world and just seeing like, okay, I can do it. What are the steps I need to take in me to empower other women? Mm-hmm. So it's just having that confidence and that boldness, and that's why I call it Bold Beauty by Isatel because – it's bold starting your own business. Yeah. It is. It's bold <laughs> making dreams and, and mm-hmm. taking chances yeah. and and forging that path when there's, you know, sometimes a lot of shame and judgment mm-hmm. and criticism about starting a network marketing business. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I want to be there to, you know, come alongside them and, and go hand in hand and help them through it because I've had my share of, of, of failures and successes and whatever I can do to empower one other woman and possibly change Another woman's life, you know, it, there's nothing like it. In, right. And that's the beauty of network marketing. So many lives have been transformed. Right, right exactly. And, and like I said, it, I, I sold Mary Kay when I was younger. Um, one of the things I really loved about those, that particular program, and I know Avon is the same way, so I'm sure Sanchez is the same way, is that the back, the support is amazing. Mm-hmm. And the information that you learn on how to run a business is phenomenal mm-hmm. because they provide you with every tool you need. Oh, yeah. Everything from social media. Literally, I'm in a training mentoring program with five other leaders that are not even like 
they're friends. They're not even in the same little structure organizationally. Uh But I learned so much from other women that normally I wouldn't have gotten to know because I wasn't a part of their team. Mm -hmm. And when there's that synergy coming together of women with the same heart, the same culture, the same passion Mm -hmm. to equip their their, the women and the women in the company and coming together and right. sharing their strengths. Like one woman's strength is social media management. The other mm-hmm. one is um, just doing um, in person demonstrations or just women coming together with all their strengths yeah, right. mm-hmm. to complement those strengths and to really help um, so many more. I just love seeing that the um, the synergy, the collaboration. So I am incredibly grateful and. Just opportunities that it's provided me and provided our, our com- the other women on our team. Now, yeah. you say here that you're getting ready to leave and go do humanitarian work in Southeast Asia. What exactly does that mean? And are you going on your own? And wow, it sounds phenomenal <laughs> and exotic and, and fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's definitely something where you, where you see something far greater than yourself. I'm like... Okay, I guess I'll do it. I guess I will. I will have faith to do it. Um, so I'm going with a large group. Um, I can't go into a lot of details just because there's so many people going. And okay. And just want to be use wisdom with it. Okay, okay. But I'm going with a large group of others. Um, the, ba- the specific location we're going with, there's about 35, they call them interns, but it's those leading other short-term teams. Mm-hmm. And really, we're going to be helping start up a community center. Open now. So, no. Yeah. So they really want to create uh, practical or serve practical needs in the communities. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in a lot of third world nations, you know, you <laughs> might see a lot of extreme rich but extreme poor at the same mm-hmm. time. Right, right. And um, I was serving on another trip last year in Southeast Asia. And I remember I had a little bit extra money to do some shopping. Mm-hmm. And I was in this big wide open bazaar. And there's this guy walking around led by his friend. He was in. Um, totally blind and he had a cane and he was begging for money mm. and I was just bawling my eyes out mm. wow so I'm like wow thank you God had I like been born in another country yeah. and growing up poor, poor I'm gonna say I grew up poor you know below the poverty line mm-hmm. I'm with a disability and a female wow. oh wow that could have easily have been me and I was just like just so grateful mm-hmm. just so grateful yeah. for his grace I'm like I want to just one day be able to do something for the blind, the disabled, the marginalized, the women that are being trafficked, just give them some sort of um, bit of just hope, like I said, hope, joy, peace, love. Like if I can help mentor other women in that nation mm-hmm. to be able to start a business because literally they have nothing. They may have been refugees Ooh. and they can't even really work there. Whatever I can do to help them use what's in their hands to to make a living for themselves, like I... I'm willing and, and, and ready to go. It's just being willing to go where your soul is telling you you need to go and serve or mm-hmm. God or, you know, right. Being. Or knowing <laughs> that you have a bigger purpose. Like I said, you, the bigger picture, there's a bigger purpose for you being on this planet. Yes. And, and to serve others. And as I said, I mean, you could have taken a different path and, and felt that because I do have this limitation that I can't do anything that I need to be able to lean on another person. So, I mean, what better person to, to be able to show them that you're just living your life just just like anybody else? Yeah, you know, I was, um, up until seventh grade, I was in and out of classes for those with disabilities. Mm-hmm. In, middle, in, in the summers, I would go. In middle school, I had a class for the disabled, and I saw so many. Um, there were still my friends that, you know, some of them are totally blind. Some are in wheelchairs. Some are blind and deaf. Some are operating with like a sixth grade, you know, education. Mm -hmm. And I just, again, it shows me how grateful for what I do have. And I think it's, again, the strength of my mother as a single mom to not let the victim mentality Mm -hmm. settle in because it's like that sheltering and the victim and like, oh, poor baby, oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, you don't need to do this. It's just like, yes, we all have um, obstacles, but... Mm -hmm to the fullness of the life that we're living is to the degree that we're able to overcome them and be victorious in them. And, you know, even just speaking to other women, whatever they've had to overcome, whatever it's depression or abuse or uh, pain from their past, yes, feel the pain, go through the process, but don't stay at being a victim. You have too much more greater of a calling in your life to just stay in that victim place. You, you need to be able to help reach out to another sister and, and pull her up and to help her overcome. 
Wow. Your mother did a phenomenal job, young yep. lady. <laughs> she did a phenomenal job. Wisdom alone. <laughs> yes. <children>. She, <laughs> she, she raised you with strength. Yeah. And, and and perseverance and right. determination. Right. And your mom is obviously an amazing lady. Yeah. Oh, she is. She is. She, I'm, I know she's like dreading me leaving for three months, but I'm like, I'm going to call you, FaceTime you every other day. <laughs> I don't want her being worried. Yeah. But, you know, it's she knows that once I once something's in my spirit and my heart and go, she can't stop me. Yeah. So. Stop well, she raised you. So, so you are the one of three siblings? Four siblings. Four siblings. Four siblings. And where do you fit in the? I'm the second oldest. Okay. Um, so I have an older brother who has wife and kids. I have my younger brother and my younger sister, and I live with my younger sister. Okay. And just so incredibly passionate. Proud of, proud of her. I'm her biggest cheerleader. She's getting her master's, graduating with um, Azusa Pacific University. Oh, okay. Uh, going into college counseling and student development. And so, you know, just whatever I can impart and share and encourage with her. And likewise, you know, just her pursuing her goals is always encouraging. So um, I'm just grateful to have that close family uh, bond because not everybody gets to have that. Yeah, and family's very, very important to making us who we really are or who we're supposed to be. When we when we come from a very loving family, uh, it's really seen as you become an adult with what you give back to other people. Right. Absolutely. So is this your first time going out of the country? or No. No, I, it said you worked overseas. Where were you when you worked overseas? So before? my last year of uh, college, I got an opportunity through the workforce uh, recruitment program with the U.S. government to work in Germany. No, I'm sorry. Let me back up. I studied in Spain for three and a half months. Okay. I always wanted to go to Portugal. My, I'm half Portuguese. Mm-hmm. And I always wanted to go. Um, so I figured, okay, the way for me to be able to go is to go study in Spain and get some Spanish language in at the same time. So okay. I did that for three months. And while I was there, I applied for a summer uh, program with the government. So I got to work in Germany for another three and a half months. Wow. And as a 20... Three year old, pretty much I got to travel every weekend and go everywhere I wanted to. Um, I just worked, you know, nine to five during the week. I I loved those days. I cherished those days. And I think, you know, coming back from that program and getting into my first nine to five job here, um, and again, it was during the 2007, 8, 9. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you were gone during the crash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was working this 9 to 5 job here back in uh, L.A. And I just realized, you know what? The 9 to 5 is not for me. I'm not I, – I came here thinking I wanted to pursue a job in the um, entertainment industry, marketing or PR. Okay. And when I had – one day I just had a vision – a greater vision, again, of something far greater than myself, far greater just seeing the impact of empowering young women uh, with identity, community, and purpose around the world. I'm like, okay, what am I doing trying to work this nine to five at a job that I was really like dreading and I hated it to begin with. So mm-hmm. I that's kind of started my journey of little by little uh, attempting and failing quite a few other businesses until mm-hmm. I've gotten to this point where I feel like I've got, learned a lot, mm-hmm. gained a lot of experience. Um, and just really help, hopefully, um, help people avoid some of the few of the failures that I had experienced. You have several books in you. Are you planning on writing them? <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day. You one know, day. Hey, well, that's the thing. I, you know, I wanted to go to the uh, business management academy because I would love to do, you know, uh, professional speaking, motivational speaking. Uh, I definitely feel like my gifting is more so spoken than written. Okay, okay, <laughs> so right. I'd love to be able to empower women on that uh, larger area through through events, through speaking. But, you know, I'm, uh, just being prosperous where I'm planted now with Senegence, with just um, pouring into and imparting into the women on my team, empowering women that want to start their own business that, you know, don't want to have to have the, he- the, the large capacity, the large uh, capital mm-hmm. to start a traditional business. They can start a thriving, you know, business where they're making profit. Right. Because, you know, as small business owners, you know, it might be a year or two before you really start generating profits. It, exactly. Right. And At then, least. And if it, if it does require a large startup um, um, margin or, or monies, then it could take you even longer because you have to get to a place where you're breaking even from your startup, right? But yeah. yeah. But that is one of the benefits of network marketing is that you can start in your entry. is very uh, affordable. Absolutely. I've seen women who literally start with almost nothing and just building it little by little. Literally, I started off with paying, you know, less than $100 into it and just building little by little 
and now I'm doing events. I'm doing a big um, pop up event at the Glendale Galleria here in Los Angeles okay. next weekend, and um, just doing other events. And that business again is able to fuel my passions in life. I'm able to do those businesses, so I don't have to be tied to a nine to five job. I can go and travel and do this humanitarian work that I'm called to. Mm-hmm. And business is kind of making that way possible for some. Their passions staying home with their kids. For others, it's just be able to work when they want and go and travel (laughs) and enjoy life and enjoy all that life has to offer. So I really want to empower women to find their passions, find what are they passionate about? What if if, um, money was no obstacle, what would they choose to do in life? Mm -hmm. And just utilize the resources that, uh, that are available to us to help them reach those goals. Mm-hmm. And, and you are an amazing person to have that conversation with our young, with young women today who are so concerned about what they look like and image. what other people look, look, uh, feel about them. Uh, but being able to find that inner place of, of serenity that it doesn't matter what you look like because it's really about who you are, right? Yes. Not necessarily what you look like because, you know, there, there's some people that I've met that they might not on the outside be the most attractive human being, but when you get to, when you start having a conversation with right. them, you don't even look on the outside because mm-hmm. their, their beauty yeah. is emanating from their every pore mm-hmm. and it's almost like they have a light shining around <laughs> right, them as right. they're speaking. So you don't even, and somebody's like, oh yeah, she's an absolutely beautiful person because it's what the inside is is what they're emitting or emulating to the world it you know it all starts with what are you focusing on right what is the focus of your day if it is solely you know the external things that you know it, it can it doesn't last very long but when you have such a focus of who you are your identity your true identity not what media not what celebrities, not what all this other garbage out there tells you your mm-hmm. identity is. But when you know that you know that you know whose you are and who you are and who you're called to be, it keep it just gives you a sure footing when, like I said, media and other people and other things say, oh, well, you're not X, Y, Z. You're not skinny enough. You're not, you know, um, your lips aren't big enough, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, I, I know who I am and these other things are just secondary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So just empowering women to find that voice, that warrior, that that um, deeper calling inside of them and let that out. Now, did you know this before you started working with Synagence? Sy- Sy- Synagence. Did you know this about yourself before that or was this evolving while you started, when, once you started working with them? You know, I've it's definitely been a, a journey. I've been going on a pretty serious journey i think about the last seven years of just a lot of healing a lot of growing a lot of personal discovery and a lot of reflection on on the good the bad and the ugly because believe me i'm i'm talking about a lot of the good but there's a whole lot of ugly that (laughs) that i had to overcome as well um so i think senegence it's just you know i like i said i've learned so much through this company Mm -hmm. that just helps me to tie so many of these things together Mm, wow. So it's, um, oh goodness, I just thought of something. But yeah, it just helps me to see that, you know, I've always had a passion for makeup. I just loved makeup. I loved learning about techniques and different things. And, you know, for a lot of years, I believed the lie that I wasn't very creative. Because mm. I'm not artsy. Like, I couldn't draw out of a, you know, I'm not <laughs> the drawing type. I'm not the, um, I like to dance, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. But when I had the revelation that I am creative through my beauty, through makeup, through the colors and the everything, I'm like, oh, that is a creative outlet for me. And so just wanting to express that and empower women to express that too. So, you know, with our company, I interact with women across the board from your professional corporate America women. I want them to, you know, give them makeup that's not going to come off. Oh, and not wow. gonna like you know wow. get on their teeth and hey, on their I lips. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> to you know women that like hey you know I want to express my creativity I want to be bold and fierce if I want to wear a blue lipstick that looks absolutely beautiful on you I'm all for it like it's that creative expression as women that we get to to uh, embrace daily. Okay, um, how did you find out about this company? You know, I heard about it on social media about a year and a half ago through other direct sales representatives. Mm -hmm. I was with another company um, and just it was not a fit. It was a brand new startup. 
a network marketing company. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'm not going anywhere with it. But I've seen this lipstick and I have a medical condition where I get dehydrated very quickly. Mm-hmm. And of course, when you're drinking gallons of water, the first thing to go is your lipstick. Right. And I'm like, okay, I've tried all these other brands. It's either drying out my lips or it's smearing or I run out of the lip gloss more than I do before I even get through half of the lip color. Okay. Like the, the, the drugstore stuff, like, you know, I'm out of that little tube and I have to buy a whole new <laughs> a whole new tube. So I tried Lip Sense. I tried a couple colors and I fell in love with it. Okay. I can eat with it, drink with it. I loved how well it performed. And so I'm like, you know what? I want to buy more of this, but I don't want to sell you pay retail price. I might want to get it, you know, as a wholesale pricing. So I looked up more about the company, the culture, what it offered. Mm-hmm. And then what I would recommend to anybody in network marketing, before you jump in, like, yeah, she might be your best friend, but what support and training and resources does her team have for you? So I literally, I had a friend of mine that lived here in LA. She moved to Texas and she told me she was selling it. And I was already looking at another girl. I was doing some research online. I'm like, hmm. So let me look at uh, my friend's leader, which uh, she's an amazing woman. Um, she, like I said, she's built a two million dollar team. Wow. Uh, within a year. Mm-hmm. And uh, Whoa. well, so this uh, within one year, her team's done over two million dollars in sales. Wow. That's <laughs> what are the products? <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's you know what? Out. This is all. This is all it is. It's lipstick, makeup. Sorry, it's lipstick, makeup. Um, everything on the face that's anti-aging and it's not going to go anywhere. You see how amazing she has it on her arm? <laughs> right. Those the, are the samples, right? Yes, there. exactly. Right? I yeah. mean, it, so it comes in red and then you have a coral. I color. have, yeah, salmon. So, I again, I learn, I follow directions. I learn from women that helped build this company. Joni, the founder, walked around with her samples on her hands. Okay. And so I'm like, okay, that's easy enough. I can do that. <laughs> So it's um I, I'm impressed with it. So ladies, if you guys didn't see her, she took her lipstick. So if I did mine, it would be all over my fingers. <laughs> Hers does not come off. And she is touching it right and now. She and she is touching it and it off. still looks like she just put it on <laughs> two hours amazing. ago. And it's all shiny. Yeah. Amazing. And I'm gonna have to have it. <laughs> that's all I know. So it. that's the thing. Like I fall in love with it. I'm like, I love this. And the compensation plan is incredible. Like when you compare it to other compensation plans, you have to recruit so many people to make 50% commission, right. up to 50%. This one, you can do it literally right out the gate. People that are salon owners, uh, beauticians, estheticians, those who um, work in their own boutique or salon, they can start selling this. So really, there's so many opportunity and so much, yeah, opportunity available out there for something that's so incredible. So why not share it with the world? That's mm-hmm. When you find something that you're passionate about and you want to share it, why not? Exactly. Why not do it? You're already sharing your Starbucks. You're sharing your food. You're sharing the outfit you got. You're not getting paid for it. Nope. <laughs> H&M isn't paying you to share the outfit no, you just they're got. Not. They're so not. <laughs> <laughs> why not create a legacy for yourself and share, you know, your makeup that you're already loving? And, you know, we've had women that are judges, attorneys, doctors join our company and making six figures. And they're able to retire from that job because, yeah, they can bring home the bacon, but that's all they can do. They can't cook it, eat it, enjoy it with their family. That's, mm-hmm. all, you know, it's, they want they want it all. They, but $2 million so dollars in one year, yeah. wow. We're going to yeah. have to take a break and We're come back and figure out how, how do you do that? <laughs> I, I'm so enthralled in what you're saying. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and take a break. You're on the business zone. Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. 
Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log in to smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186. In the United States, March is Women's History Month. It honors women's contributions in all areas of life, as scientists, inventors, artists, politicians, and more. The celebration began in 1978, when the School District of Sonoma, California, hosted a week-long recognition of women's accomplishments throughout history. The idea spread, and in 1980, President Jimmy Carter proclaimed the week of March 8th National Women's History Week. Six years later, an organization called the National Women's History Project convinced Congress to dedicate the entire month of March to women's history. Each year, a special focus for the month is declared by the National Women's History Project. For example, important artists like photographer Dorothea Lange and painter Mary Cassatt have been celebrated. Pioneers such as educator Mary McLeod Bethune, Clara Barton, who founded the Red Cross, Amelia Earhart in aviation, and First Lady Michelle Obama have also been honored. Women's History Month celebrates unsung heroes too. The countless women who helped when our country was at war, women who run businesses and volunteer in their communities, single mothers who work and raise families, and the unknown writers and artists in history whose works were never made public, yet teach historians much about our country's past. Which women in your life would you like to celebrate? So we're back in the business zone with... Crystal. And Gilbert Buchanan and our very special guest here in our studio, Miss Isatel... Dutra, and, and she <laughs> is just unbelievable. She uh, she's an entrepreneur. She is a, a an innovator, and she's got this great product, this great lipstick product that works well for women. <laughs> it does not smudge at all. It you can touch it with off. your finger, wipe it on a piece of cloth. <laughs> nothing. It doesn't come off. It stays. Now I think. Um... <laughs> Uh, I've actually used this when it, when I think I, um, I used to go to, and I still do go to beauty shows all the time. Oh yeah. And I believe I used it the very first year when it came out. 1999. Yeah. Ah. I, yeah. Cause I had, I was starting, um, my business partner and I, we were going to open up a men's grooming salon. Mm. And so we were going to all the day spas. Oh no, we were doing a day spa at that time. Uh-huh. And so we were looking for product lines and I think I used it, but then I, I got away from it and I never, I think I even had like three or four different colors that I had purchased at the Yeah. Convention. There's originally five colors that came out. Right. Up until 2017, I think they had like 72. But the crazy thing is, last year the company grew by seven hundred percent. Wow, seven hundred! Like when maybe another company grew by forty percent. We like literally when I signed up this time last year, everything was out of stock because the demand was so high. Mm, wow, the demand was so high. So uh, they kind of scaled down some of the colors. But now we have like over fifty. And me being the makeup lover I am, I think I have about forty colors for oh, testers. My <laughs> And so now, where would one purchase this? From your website, your Facebook page? Yes. Your Facebook, where, how do so I find this? You can um, search for me on Facebook. I'm uh, either Isatel Dutra, my profile, or Bold Beauty by Isatel. It's spelled like Isabel, but with a T. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Bold Beauty by Isatel.com. I do women's events, so women that want to get free products. I actually host glam and gloss parties, home parties. Okay. Where women, women get together, they have little mini facials, they play with makeup up, have some wine or some snacks. And like I said, the hostess gets free products. I do do select vendor events throughout Los Angeles. So next weekend, Saturday the 24th and 25th, Glendale Gallery is doing a Rise and Shine pop-up event. So I will have all the testers, all the makeup, all the skincare 
Uh, the best that even Sephora don't have. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm a little I'm a little partial, but um, I'm having a pop up booth so women can try out the makeup, take it home, um, or just say, hey, you know what? I want to try this. I love this. I've been looking for a business opportunity that I don't have to spend an arm and a leg to do, and but I can make six figures. I can make you know t- an extra thousand a month, five thousand a month on up. So um, definitely, women that want to just see what I do. They're more than welcome to come. Or like I said, contact me. Contact me on Facebook. I'm more than willing to share, um, speak more about it, talk with them about it. Like I said, my amazing leader, she literally has built an online academy strategically for our team. So there's so many resources that we have available for women that genuinely, genuinely want to build a business because it can happen. And you don't have to have... Literally, you can start off with $55, $100, $500. Um, I did... A party for a woman that her sister owns a nail salon. She works for a high end uh, nail polish company, and she had girlfriends over and sold five hundred dollars in products in one night. Wow, wow, that's amazing! So, I, I think since you have the camera on you <laughs> right now, you should do that smudge test again <laughs> and show them that nothing comes off. Look nothing at that. comes off. Wow. It is on her hand. It, <laughs> it is permanently on. I'm yep. going to be ordering me some lipsticks because I love that. That so, is amazing. What does your name mean? Um, my mother, like I said, my mom raised us. So when she, when I asked her, she pretty much told me that my dad took the Aztec name Xochil, which means flower, uh-huh. and kind of tweaked it, translated it to Spanish to English. Uh-huh. And my mom liked it because it reminded her of a Shirley Temple movie where the kids' names were Mimtel and Ishtel. Oh, so okay. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I love that. So, so now Gilbert had a question for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so my question, Isatel, is. Um, the audience is looking and they're wondering, they're going, okay, she looks Latina. She also looks Asian. What is she? So what ethnicity are you? Well, you know, I love for people on Facebook live to even post their, their <laughs> predictions. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to get interactive that? here. I want to be interactive. Do what do you do think? That? For those of you who are watching the show right now, we'd like I you can. to post your <laughs> predictions as to what Isatel's uh, ethnicity is. <laughs> And we we go off the air at 5 o'clock. So if you can do that before 5, that would be great. Let us know. Give us a call here at 323-293-3375. And Crystal and I will be happy. And Isotel as well will be happy to take your call. She's already giving you a hint. Yeah. She already gave us one one part of her. (laughs) There's only so much you can choose from. I was telling them I was joking around with my name, Isotel Dutra. It's not like Jessica or Heather. When you look at my name on a paper, you don't know if I'm male, female. You don't know what that nationality I am. But so. it's a beautiful name. I mean, <laughs> it's just so lyrical. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. It, it's absolutely That's beautiful. phenomenal. So what countries are you going to in South... Um, I, can't, um, can't. I can't reveal it just because, like I said, it's a part of a larger movement of oh, okay. uh, volunteers that are yeah. going. Yeah. But I am very excited. I Like I said, I've gone to other third world uh, nations in Southeast Asia. And I went for 12 days and that was a stretching experience. So when I was given this opportunity, originally I was going to go for two weeks, like a lot of the other short-term teams, but a leader at my um, at my church, she s- said, well, hey, have you thought about doing the three-month program? I'm like, no, I have not <laughs> third of, <laughs> heard of, thought about it. I was like, um, I did 12 days in this other country, and I was fine. I was ready to go home because um, there's just some... I, it taught me to be dependent and reliant on other people to help me very quickly because it's so congested. Oh, okay. And it was like, literally, when you cross the street, it was like playing Frogger. Oh, wow. And I don't play like that. My mom <laughs> raised me to be very, like, paranoid about traffic and, and getting run over. So I was like, can I do three months? Can I do this? But as I learned more about the opportunity and just opportunities to serve, I'm, again, I'm going with a group. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm all in for it. And so I'm doing the fundraising process. I'm, you know, building my business and everything I make with the business I'm putting into it. But, okay. you know, I believe in partnering and people can partner to make a difference internationally. It's just if you can't go, why not help support someone who is going? Yeah. Right, exactly. And you're still just a big part of that yeah. as that other person. So I'm. So are you raising funds? For yes, you to go? So I'm raising would, funds. If one wanted to contribute to your fund to help you with this journey, um, they can contact me again through um, Facebook well, Live. Okay. They can contact me through Facebook. Um, through yeah, like if you look at my name, Isatel Dutra, you can contact me there, and I can send you the link. Okay. And uh, that's I S A T E L Isatel. Isatel. 
Dutra, Dutra, D-U-T-R-A. Right. Connect with me on Facebook. It's a lot easier than sending you my whole email address. and <laughs> uh, So I can gladly send you a link. Um, it's tax-deductible uh, donation. I have about 5800 to raise within two months. Oh, okay. wow. So, again, that will grow your faith really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, okay, will. well, God, if you're calling me to go, <laughs> the oh. money's going to come. <laughs> now, do they get anything for that donation? Do you give them samples or what do you do? You know, well, they do get a tax uh, write-off, a tax donation to receipt. Yeah. Um, if ladies in the L.A. area would like to host an event mm-hmm. or they have an event they'd like for me to bring all my products, yeah. I'll definitely hook them up with a free product or two depending on the sales of it. And yeah. like I said, I'm using the business profits to go to help pay for the trip. So definitely – if women, you want to have girlfriends over about five or ten, or have me as a vendor at, well, have me show the products at an event, um, definitely work something out. But yeah, I'm like, I'll, I'll definitely help, um, definitely give what I can and sow what I can to, to help reach that goal. So I have, pro- I have some samples and I no, have some I just free think products. It's <laughs> it, it is. She's going. It is. Um, and so I will definitely, and when we, what we're going to do is, uh, I'll, I'll edit the, the clip and then send it to you and then we'll put it up and with the information on how to, uh, help you get to your, your goal here. Thank you. Today, I think cause it's a phenomenal mm-hmm. one, phenomenal that you, you're choosing to leave your comfortable life here yeah. for three months and go to a third world country yeah. and give of yourself to someone else. That's definitely a worthwhile cause for anyone to, to, to help you do that. Well, thank you. You know, um, I, again, I'm just so grateful because when you have had so much transformation and um, life change and healing and joy and just a renewed vision in your life, and it's not touched you, and it's touched you in such a powerful way, you can't help but share it with other people. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard one woman's story of her testimony of how her life was dramatically saved. Her, her life was dramatically healed. A woman that used to work in the adult industry mm-hmm. and just all the pain that led her into that point. And this was in a church. So when I heard that, I was like, is, is fire not going to like consume her right now? <laughs> and, but, but her story really transformed my life and my healing journey. And where I'm a totally different person than I was, you know, 10 years ago. And so, yeah, I want to h- share that same hope, the joy, the love, the identity, just everything that I've that's empowered me so much. I want to share it with other people if it, that's empowering women um, to start a business for themselves, if it's empowering them to just um, get the healing and have feel like they have a safe person to talk to mm-hmm. without any judgment or condemnation or like, you know, well, you shouldn't have done this and that. But then, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. And I think it's also in this day and age when we're – uh, living in a world that is so racially divided, mm-hmm. um, so ethnically uh, divided, that when you go f- leave your own little comfortable surroundings and you go to other countries and you see how people live and, and you understand their cultures and why they do what they do, it, it really gives you a better understanding mm-hmm. of people in, 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 in general. Yeah. Right? And that we're all the same. Yeah. It's just where we may have been born yeah. and the skin color that we may have been born right. with, which is justifiable depending on where you came from. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, everybody's the same, right? right? Absolutely. I think it gives you a great level of empathy mm-hmm. and emotional intelligence when working with people when you can you know understand where are they coming from what is causing them maybe have that attitude or have that disposition or you know is causing them to shrink back or hold themselves back from the greater calling that they have for their lives because of fear because of shame because of you know um lies not i don't say lies but um things that they've heard growing up and just helping them to see the truth in that yeah, and I think that makes a big difference. And so many people, I, I read an article the other day uh, that they were saying a lot of what's, what is going on in the United States today is that there are a lot of people that chose to stay. So if you were born in a very small little town, mm-hmm. um, you never, they, most of these people have never left. They, right. they, they were born there, yeah. they grew old there, they had their kids there, mm-hmm. and they never left that one little town. Right. So all the people that they know are the same people that they grew up with Mm -hmm. (laughs) the same experiences and they only have seen other people outside of their world through television right yeah that's the only time they've seen it so they've never had an interaction with another body or another person of a different color or ethnicity ethnicity, uh, to understand 
who that person really, really is. Right. Absolutely. And I think it's something that's so essential in being an entrepreneur is, pe- is people skills. Mm-hmm. Learning how to build relationships with people, learning how to speak in a way that's going to honor them and you guys are actually speaking the same language because Mm -hmm. if I'm trying to speak to you in French and you're trying to speak back to me in Chinese, we're not going to get anywhere. Right. Right. Exactly. So it's like you have to know the people skills and know that personnel, the person's, um, Disp- not necessarily disposition, but their personality style and mm-hmm. learning to speak into that yeah. mm-hmm. and being able to be on that same page and that same wavelength. And you as a leader, because if you are an entrepreneur, you're pretty much being a leader. Mm-hmm. Um, just learning how to help that person see the bigger picture, help that person to overcome whatever it is through that communication style. Right, exactly. And and, and having a limited, you know, being legally blind, you're not, you have to hear, you have to talk right. to people and hear the nuances mm-hmm. in the conversation right. versus yes. what you're actually seeing, right? Mm-hmm. And, and smell and so forth. So you're using your other senses and not relying on just what your eyes are telling right, you right. Now, again, about that person. It's, it's about knowing all the resources that are available to you and utilizing them. What is... What is going to help you uh, navigate that situation in that moment? What is in your arsenal? What's in your toolkit? How can I utilize that to get you know the objective accomplished? Mm-hmm. Now, your mom had to have raised you very independently for you to have gone off to school uh-huh, yeah. to another country. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> so what was what was your growing up like? <laughs> you know, my mom, I it's seeing her overcome so much to raise us for. Her working and do whatever it could, going to school, because she had a, um, a slight disability in her hand as well. So it kind of limited her in certain capacities. Okay. But I saw her as a single mother doing whatever it took to raise us, to be at home with us, uh, to keep us in the same schools. If I wanted to do color guard, you know, she made it. I don't know how. <laughs> I think, like, it's a, it's a wonder if I want to do dance. She'd, you know, make a way for us to do what we wanted to do. She didn't... Um, Hold. Well, she didn't really hold us back from from doing what we wanted, and in that healthy respect, she mm-hmm. was definitely. We were all pretty much good kids growing up. Wanted to be active and involved, and so I think it's just literally the part of it was just what God put in me. I think I'm just been very like, okay, I just make it. I got to make it happen. How can I get it? How how can I get from point A to point B? And um, yeah, so I think it's part of its personality. Part of it's what has been um, placed in me from the beginning and mm-hmm. part of its upbringing. So, um, and that's not to say that I don't, I think a lot of people tend to use their upbringing as an excuse, mm-hmm. as a crutch. I could have easily said, well, because of my vision and because I grew up low income, I sh-, you know, that's because I'm doing X, Y, and Z. That's because mm-hmm. I don't have this money. That's because I don't have this in my life. Or you could say in spite or be- despite, those things I'm able to achieve X, Mm -hmm. Y, and Z. So it's just really your perspective and how you choose to see things and how you, um, the mindset you choose to have in it. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like people, you know, you Mm -hmm. came from a different country and came here and there are a lot of people. I have a girlfriend that when she was 18, she was born in South Africa. And uh, so she left when she was 18 and went to, I think she went to Italy first and she was there for about four or five years. And then from there, she left and went to England and she was there until she came here. And she came here because she met her husband, Um, but they didn't get married for a number of years until later on. But that's just such a free spirit. Most mm-hmm. people yeah. do not just pack a bag and say, I That's am right. out of here, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> you know, and, and not even to go the way to school. Uh, Usually <laughs> you pack a bag and go, okay, I'm going to college. And I'm going to check out life. <laughs> right, right. I'm going, mom. I'm a, I mean, even some college students have a hard time uh, that first year. Yeah. Going away to college is a, mm-hmm. is really tough oh, that yeah. first year. You know, it's interesting. Well, I, went, I grew up I, well, I went to University of California, Riverside, and I grew up in Riverside. So my mom was about 10, 15 minutes away. Okay. So my freshman year, I did the dorms. I've, yeah, I lived life crazily in college. And, uh-huh. um, but yeah, I, I just knew, like, this is a special time. And I wanted to accomplish all that I wanted to accomplish while I was there. Because who else, you know, when else can you spend three months in Europe? Unless you're an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, working a typical nine to five, you don't easily have that. So this is a time to really take advantage of all the opportunity mm-hmm. available. So, 
yeah, I made sure I wanted to be president of an organization. I was president of the Latino. Well, I kind of already. Well, no, <laughs> never mind. We already never talked about mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but not just all I'm, Latino. <laughs> I'm pretty much an open book. <laughs> Latino Business Student Association. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to study abroad. And so, you know, I had, again, financial aid. I was able to do it. And, um, again, my mom was, had some trepidation, but she just made sure I called her every other day and okay. got, to, got to talk with the lady that I lived with. And, you know, it's like she, I've, I've stretched my mother a, a whole lot as well. <laughs> so you, and I love you, mom. <laughs> so are you the only one that's done the traveling? No, actually, my, so my older brother, he went to a community college for a couple of years, graduated right out of college. Um, and then my, um, younger brother, he wanted to blaze his own trail. He's very self taught self-read my mm-hmm. younger sister actually didn't get to go to spain for a month oh, okay. when she went to college so i love that opportunity with her we keep saying one of these days we're both going to go to uh we're both going to go travel together we're oh, very that'll close be that'll be fun yeah travel. yeah my, i have a girlfriend that's cuban and so she had an opportunity um her second job i get well because she was there for about 25 years but she worked for the airlines oh. and so she's traveled with the airlines all over she's um she went to spain i think she took her her mom and dad to barcelona and she's um in fact on uh, 9-11 she was at actually in italy oh wow. and she and uh, my girlfriend they had gone i didn't go i don't know what i was doing um they had gone to italy and she um, she was out shopping, and when she came back, uh, the shop the, the the hotel manager was like, "Your country go boom!" And she's like, "What?" Wow! Because he, he he didn't speak English. All that way. He's like, "Your country go boom!" And she's going boom. <laughs> so then she, oh, wow! Because they had been out all morning, so they had no clue. Oh, so when they turned on the television, they saw that the, you know nine eleven the, mm-hmm. the twin towers had been bombed. So she got on the phone. And so one of my girlfriends is very artistic. And so she was like, oh, well, then we should go off to a villa and just stay there. And she's like, no, we need to get out of this country. And so she got on the phone and she started making phone calls. And they ended up having to take a train to uh, Budapest and then from Budapest, no, to Belgium. Belgium and then from Belgium to London and then from there they stayed overnight and they were able to get back in because they went on um, non-rev they were flying by a a buddy pass Uh, they didn't have to be locked into a ticket so mm, they could go to and use the sister airlines in order to get back and so she got back like within 24 hours of of that happening whereas a lot of people were stuck wherever they were that's the thing I man I would love I love to travel like i well, that's part of I think why why I want to you know go and serve. But man, if I if I wasn't doing this, but definitely I would have loved to work in the airlines. It's such an opportunity, just again to see other cultures. I think there's so much wealth and knowledge. Oh, for sure. And just experiencing other cultures and experience, like life is about experience. So right. just being able to make the most of every experience and, and make those things happen. And, you know, like I said, with my business, I want to empower women to live by design, not by default. Okay. You know, um, when, like that women may not be content with the nine to five. They want to be able to travel and take weeks off and not have to worry about, you know, so many vacation days or, you know, if they wanted to go do this humanitarian work that I'm doing for two weeks or for three months, they can be able to do that. It's just, you know, I think it's just making – what are your priorities in life? What do you want to see happen and figure out how to make them happen? Making, Learning how to take the steps necessary to accomplish that. And I think also, I know for me, it's um, when I leave this planet, you know, what have I done? Yeah. Right. You know, and, and I want to be all used up. So I've <laughs> done I, I've done some pretty, you know, things that most people um, uh, that don't have skied, I river raft, I hike, I do all of that sort of stuff because I want to make sure that I'm all used up when I leave. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no My mileage day. left. Yeah. yeah. I like, like a leaf they all dried out and just blow on into the wind and I didn't done everything that I needed to do right. so, so I was open to two things so when, when, I, when I first learned how to ski um, some girlfriends of mine um, um, that I work with one of them had just moved here she was from England and she again when you're from other countries you tend to just pack up and just leave right mm-hmm. I get my bag I'm oh, gone yeah. and you, you're operating from one little backpack right <laughs> and so she came and she started if she 
went to Florida and then she went to to um, Colorado and Vail and she was a chambermaid and so someone left some skis in the room and so they gave them to her and so she's taught her she went and took some lessons right <laughs> and so when she got here she's like oh my god I just skied and it was so much fun and so we're like okay let's go so it was like seven women we went up to the mountains and we all took lessons and and uh, we had a phenomenal time and then I pursued it further I met some friends um, that belong to a ski club in Los Angeles and then so for like 20 years I skied almost every other weekend um, and even when summertime we would go to um, Oregon to ski and in, in August, so it it was a different life, and 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 I remember every bit of it, and it's part of my youth, right? And I think you know, um, that's the other oh, goodness. I'm trying to remember exactly what I was going to say, but I um, even with the you know, despite the vision, I was a part of um, an organization organization called Braille Institute, and they have locations in Orange County. They have one in Palm Springs, and they have one in L.A. Okay, living in Riverside, the closest one was Orange County, which was still a mission, but they made it work. Mm -hmm. um, and so through them, even when I was like twelve years old, I got to learn how to ski. Oh, okay. and got to do that. I got to go whitewater rafting mm -hmm. <laughs> in uh, Sacramento when I was about fifteen or sixteen. So yeah, I think it's like whatever. Uh, things are available to you why not take advantage of them why not go after them why not try it out and actually skiing without sight is actually better than skiing with sight because most people their biggest issue with skiing is knowing that they're going to go down a cliff and you can see everything mm -hmm. coming at you trees and everything if you can't see it you don't even know that you there's anything to be afraid of well, <laughs> that's good to know <laughs> Well, that will go ahead and take our final break you were for saying, today. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch you guys do the skiing. I'm not getting involved in the skiing. But you know, there was, when I was skiing there, um, and I was a ski instructor, uh, there were many groups that came up. We had the deaf that would come up and learn to ski, and then there were those that are paraplegic and and the handicapped uh, with one or paralyzed from the waist down. They'd put them in wow. a little. Uh, it, yeah. It didn't even matter. It's amazing yeah. therapy. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break, our final break for the day, and uh, we'll come back. We'll take a look at those Facebook postings <laughs> to see if we had any of our guests, uh, uh, our listeners, <laughs> to figure out your ethnicity. And that's going to be that's going to be amazing. So let's take a break. They didn't Hello. Here, meet but... Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30 day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186.
So we're back on the business zone with our wonderful guest here in the studio. I said tell. I said tell. Yes. Do <laughs> tell. Amazing one, young woman. Amazing. She has so many information, very inspiring. And uh, we're just in awe here, Crystal. I am. I am. I, just, I mean, it's just the fact she she's just so, it's, it's the energy yes. and the passion that yes. comes from you when you talk about the things that you really, really care about yes. and, and the makeup and, and your travel and and. And just the, her, 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 her approach to life. You know? Right, it's her just, approach to life, which is amazing yes. because a lot of people, you know, even not even having a, a vision, uh, a limitation, some people just create their own limitations. Right. <laughs> exactly. right. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. They handicap themselves. Yes. And, and because they are so afraid to try new and different things yes. and, and, and explore. Yeah. Um, I, I saw something, I was watching a show last night. And this woman, her her son was 18, mm -hmm. and and his mom and they were having problems. They were just like butting heads, right? Yeah. And so she told him, and he hadn't found a job, and she really wanted him to move out. She really wanted him to to live in his fullness, right? Yeah. And so they happened to be in an elevator, and the elevator fell, mm -hmm. and he was so afraid. That she, when she fell, she hit her head. Ooh. So he had to help her. Yeah. So when 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 the rescue squad got when the uh, paramedics got there, she was on the gurney and she says, "You know what? You have to move out." She <laughs> says, "Because we, I have to let you go, because you were able to take care of me, where I'm usually the one taking care of you. Yeah. But if I let you stay here." I'm going to hinder you from growing. Mm. So he says, but I don't have a job. She goes, you'll get one. <laughs> <laughs> fight or flight, baby, fight right. or flight. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes that's what happens, right? Yeah. We, yeah. we limit ourselves yeah. um, because we create our own lim our exactly. own handicaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you're born with a, a handicap or something that th appears to be, right. you have to make a different way. And, Absolutely. And that's why as entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs are supposed to think like this. This, wherein right. you don't limit yourselves, you you find ways of uh, uh, creating opportunities for your business, and uh, you know this is great because <laughs> this is a great inspiration for entrepreneurs. It is, yeah, because that's really what it is. Because you have to think of doing things a different way, different, right? Because yeah. you don't have the wherewithal, money wise, monetarily. Yeah. Yep. And sometimes you don't have all the skills, mm -hmm. so you have to be able to you have to be self taught. Right. Yes, and and but you can't stay. You know what? That's one of the things I find with entrepreneurs. You know, if someone has taught them how to do it one way, yeah. they don't see how to do other ways, which other is possibilities. there are other possibilities. And when they teach you, when you go to college, that's one of the things they're teaching you mm. to be in route, right? Just right. to do the same thing routinely over and over mm -hmm. again and not think outside the yeah, box. Yeah. So it, it's like, you know, do you color within the box or do you color with outside the box? <laughs> Why does there got to be a box? Yeah, right. Why exactly. does there got to be a box? <laughs> <laughs> so did we, did we, how many people <laughs> Nobody in responded and, over and here. Us? Yeah. That thing? And a book uh -uh. that I really love by Nellie Galan is called Self Made. Oh, yeah. And again, it takes it from the, um, immigrants perspective of mm -hmm. how so many immigrants have come here with literally nothing in their pockets. Right. Lang you know, language mm -hmm. barrier to get through and how, you know, they overcome whatever it took, that hunger, that necessity yeah. to make things happen and make a difference for themselves yeah, and leave more. that legacy. So I highly recommend that book. Well, I gave it to somebody else. I'm like, I need to get another one to reread it myself. But yeah, I mean, there's so many resources out there. Just find what are you passionate about? What do you enjoy doing? And believe me, with internet, with there's so, there's no excuse not to find what oh, you yeah. want to do nowadays. I, I can definitely associate with that because I was telling you on a previous yeah. show that I came here to the U.S. with $200 in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> And at the airport, when I jump into my, my, my taxi cab uh -huh. to take me to where I'm going, the cab driver jacked me 50 bucks. <laughs> so now you have oh, yeah. 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 So now I have 150 left. <laughs> and that 150 is what I converted into what I have today. Wow. You see what I mean? Yeah. That's so, what I so that right there, it tells me, just like you say, the immigrant comes here 
and has nothing else and they have to make do and make things happen. So And I think also because wherever you came from, you know, all the opportunities may not have been there. Exactly. Um yeah. so one of the reasons you're coming because here <laughs> is because you know that it's like supposed to be the land of plenty, right? Yep. And that you can make a way out of nowhere. Exactly. Yes. And, and uh and that's the sad part of what's going on in our country yes. where we're saying we don't want immigrants mm-hmm. here. Well immigrants change yeah. our lives. Change our because yeah. they're they're coming here with such a hunger mm-hmm. to do something different and bigger, and they yes. know the opportunities are mm-hmm. here. Yes, so the sky is the limit oh, for them, yeah. right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think there's something can be done to help help immigrants the right way to to accomplish and get get what they came here for mm-hmm. in a right way that's going to help our country just better it in the right way. But I think it's yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think. Um, just seeing people and seeing so many of the big companies that are made today were from immigrants. Look exactly. at Shark, to- Shark Tank. Exactly. Yeah. Well, everything. And yeah. now the internet, basically, you're looking at people mm-hmm. that came from other countries. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. and, and the biggest and the brightest. And then when you look at countries like India, I, I watch a lot of um, uh, foreign movies mm-hmm. because, again, I want to see what the cultures what? are, yes. right? Yeah. And the nuances. And I don't speak the language, but I can read the subtitles, right? Mm-hmm. And And sometimes I can just, you can see what another person is thinking and saying mm-hmm. just by how they're acting and, yes. and, and their facial expressions and their body movement. Mm-hmm. So it helps me totally understand without even understanding the language. Right, right. Um, but one of the things that has happened over the years in India, India is a very, very poor country. Very. Unless you're, even when you're in Mumbai and, and, New, um, and New Delhi, there's still parts. There's there's elaborate parts, and then the but the 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 the, the poor parts are yeah. greater than the elaborate. Most parts. of the people yeah. in India don't even have internet. They don't, they don't, have, they don't internet. have internet. They live in little shacks. Right. Yeah. Um. They no water. No running water. No water running water, yeah. and they have a caste system. Yeah. So whatever you were born into doing, yeah. that's what you're supposed to do for the rest yeah. of your life. Yeah. yeah. But then when you're watching the movies and the music and their dance dancing and their celebrations mm-hmm. and w- no matter what whatever their economic levels are when they have a wedding they right. come in for three to seven days mm-hmm. and they party and yeah. they the flowers and and you see that that's just something the, the poverty has nothing to do with who the people are that's true that's true no, it's what you make of life is what you make of it right yeah. you exactly. know I've, I've seen so many people in like developing nations in third world nations that they have very little of man their life is probably richer than a lot of people here in the united states it's just what you make of it what you focus on grows Mm -hmm. right exactly and and the very basics is 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 a wealth for them oh yeah right and running water in some cases like gold see one of the things (laughs) that we 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 strive on in jamaica is education yeah you know we we were taught the british way and we were very proud of that because a high school education in Jamaica is equivalent to the community college education here. Mm. Yeah. So when I came here and I did all my tests and everything in, in high school and I came here, they wanted me to do uh, the GED. And I'm going, well, I'm not doing any GED. <laughs> so I went to college. And when I went to college, I aced it. I went to community right, college. Right. I aced it. My GPA was... Three point nine five. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I graduated. Um, I think it was summa summa cum laude. Wow. Right. And then when I went to undergrad, I graduated magna cum laude. So okay. that means my GPA was about three point nine. Mm. Wow. Yeah. No. You see what I mean? Yeah. So those were things, and they were trying to get me to do a remedial course. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know, they want me to start all over. I got to take English, and I got to do all of these things. No, I said I wasn't going to do that. So anyway, they found out that they made a mistake. So then they start going, "Okay, we're not going to judge you guys anymore." But Ooh. that's what they do. Yeah. yeah. You, you're a foreigner. You come here, and right? Because you, because you don't particularly speak the language, yeah. so that makes it they they automatically assume you don't understand yeah, you that don't, you don't have the intellect smart enough. because you don't have the language. Yeah. Right? Well, it even as even with somebody with a disability yeah. in high school freshman exactly. year, they have just put me in the regular English classes. Honestly, I taught myself multiplication and division, and everything in elementary school, and I'm like thinking to myself, why wasn't I tested for the you know I'm not, not to toot my own horn or sound bigger, yeah. but like the gifted. Um, 
Right. Tell people them. just assume right. because you couldn't see that you weren't bright. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, at high school, I had to ask to put myself in an honors English class my 10th grade year. Right. Mm. So I had to make that step to request those college preparatory classes mm-hmm. because if it was just up to the professor they, or oh, the, they the um, yeah. guidance counselor, like, okay, I'll just yeah. put in regular They bring classes. a certain bias to, to the table. Well, they, yeah. they automatically do, and they do make judgment calls oh, yeah. based upon either your ethnicity or, yes. or your other limitations. Or yeah. your, 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 right. Um, in fact, I think that happens a lot with the young kids that are born autistic in spectrum, right? Yeah. These are brilliant human yes. beings, mm-hmm. right? But they have very limited um, you know, they, they, they're um, emotionally, they may yeah. not connect with you, but they are very, very bright, brighter than the average human yeah. being. Again, they have their own set of obstacles that right. if they're caught early, they're only them and their families are going to have the ops, the resources needed to help overcome them as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. So yeah. it is it, it, judging a book by its cover oh, yeah. and not understanding entirely what's inside of the book. And, and that's a great point you brought up, Crystal, because this affects all of us right here that I'm going to talk about right now. And I found out uh, through some research that um, an immigrant or minority um, litigant in the courtroom end up getting convicted, especially African-American. African-Americans mm-hmm. get convicted 70% of the time. Mm-hmm. A uh, Latino may get uh, convicted 55% of the time, but it's that bias that they bring into the courtroom, the, the, the judges mm-hmm. and attorneys bring to the courtroom that really impacts us mm-hmm. because they come in with that idea, that preconceived notion that, yeah, you did it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even though they haven't listened, looked at your evidence, they haven't right. listened to you speak or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So they come in there with a preconceived notion and you're, you know, you're going to get convicted. Right, and, and 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 then they want to convince you of the fact that you are you don't you're not bright, you're not bright or you don't enough. understand what yeah, they're you don't saying, understand or you don't understand the about. system. Yeah, um, and and that's you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's those pre yeah. pre. My nephew, when he was a little, um, both the boys, um, they had a speech impediment when they were uh, little. Mm-hmm. Um, Trent, Trent, and the oldest one, he didn't even speak. For a long time, and we spoke for him, so yeah. he really didn't really feel like he had to speak, right? <laughs> and uh, but then my sister found out very early on that they had a speak speech impediment, mm-hmm. um, and so she put them in training uh, and, and and forced them to have language classes and mm-hmm. and and uh, support, right? Yeah. Um, so w- while they were doing that, we found out that the youngest one was actually dyslexic, and mm-hmm. it really runs in the family mm-hmm. of my brother in law's family. A lot of them are dyslexic, right? So. Uh, Travis, so he found out very, very early. So he always had support and, and mm-hmm. uh, sort out resources yes. and, and throughout his whole school, and, yeah. and, and can have it now at, mm-hmm. at college as well. Mm-hmm. But Travis, so one day somebody we were saying something. My sister was saying something. Somebody, oh yeah, Travis is dyslexic. He goes, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, he, but he of course there's a diagnosis he goes no I'm not wow. I am me yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have the label to find him right. Right. Doesn't have to no hold him back. Yeah. you don't have to have a label yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but he probably wasn't even dyslexic huh? well there is well when he was younger Little yeah tendency, but because but he, he already had right? resources yeah. I mean over the holidays and he's so quiet yeah. that, and we didn't discount him we definitely knew yeah. right but um, over the Christmas holiday, he when he started working, he started buying uh, computer components, and he was going to build his own gaming computer. Mm-hmm. Computer, and we're like, "Well, how you know how to do that?" See, and he says, "Don't worry about it." See? I know. Yeah. So he's buying all these computers. Mm-hmm. So the day after Christmas, he went in his room, and when he came out. Within 24 hours, he had built a beautiful computer. Wow. Nice. It's just absolutely, and it's like, how did you know? See? And he's been watching videos. See, that's why I'm not dyslexic. He, right, exactly. They're, they're he read through all the directions. Everyone has diamonds and gold, gold within right? them, <laughs> yeah. but it's up to the right things to help mine that out exactly. of them and speak that out and discover that. So, yeah. Yes. He might not, he might have had these things to get uh, hidden, but what only people see or can tend to focus on. Oh, well, this is his shortcoming. Right. But hey, he's got a whole lot of other right. um, 
you know, greater advantages, greater um, skill sets. sets that we don't know. Yeah. Because he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And not put him in a position where he was using that. Yeah, we, I mean, <laughs> we could be probably dyslexic. Right, exactly. And, in fact, when he was in high school, when he, when he was in his junior year, and he's, of course, the more introverted one in the house. Yeah. The other one is outgoing, So and, and he's bright. I mean, yeah. they're both, all of them are very, both of them are very bright. And so when he was in junior year, he says, I'm going to go run track. And we're like, you are. You don't ever leave your room. When you go. You don't even walk fast. What are you talking about? So he came and he was sitting down to dinner and he says, "I tried out for the varsity, the varsity." Uh-huh. And he said, "They." And, and my sister's like, "Really?" And so, and not that she doesn't believe that we just he never ran. So how do we know, right? So, so then he came in from we came in to dinner. He goes. I was ex- I was up, uh, accepted to the varsity team. <laughs> wow! And then when he when we went to the to the track meets, he was super fast. Yeah. So what were you doing? Accumulating energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was actually one of the second fastest kids on the team. See, wow! When he graduated knew. in high school, nobody knew. Nobody knew. Just it goes to show in that box. <laughs> yep. When you're driven, when you have your mind set on something, mm-hmm. you figure you you make it happen. You work yeah. for it. And you don't know what potential is hidden within us until mm-hmm. you really walk it out. Right. Like I in high school, I, there's only cheer and color guard. There's no dance. I'm, I love the dance. I think my sophomore year there wasn't only any dance groups. There was color guard. Oh. Okay. So color guard is when you're throwing and tossing flags up in the air and catching wow, them. Wow. Okay. So I practiced a whole lot. I'm, God bless the coach that I think he feel like he had to sign me, <laughs> had to accept me in there or something. But I I practiced night and day, practiced learning how to toss the flags and catching them, and made it work and did it for a season, performing with the band and color guard. Fantastic. So it's like you never know what's you, possible until you go out there and try it, and you exactly. make some mistakes, you fall, but you get back up well, and that's just all keep working on it. it. Yeah, right? you absolutely. Can't, you can't listen to the people who keep telling you no. A typical example of that is I was watching Shark Tank, mm-hmm. and this guy came on Shark Tank, and he 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 created this this doorbell, but it's got a video camera on it. Okay. So you have the doorbell set up, and when someone come and ring that doorbell, the camera or the video camera on it takes a video of you, so the person on the inside get to see who is out there yeah. without even going. Okay. And, th- and that person can also be somewhere else, but they get to see it on their phone. Right. Okay. Yeah. So on Shark Tank. They told him that he called it the doorbot. That's what he called it, doorbot, B O T. And the Shark Tank, they said, ah, this is not an investable product. We're not going to waste our money or our time on that. I don't believe in that. Amazon just bought it from him. One billion dollars. Wow. One billion dollars. Yeah. Love it. You see what Love I'm it. Yes. Everyone in Shark Tank told him no. Oh. <laughs> That's not a good investment. We don't want to waste our time on it. Now they're kicking themselves <laughs> yeah. because Amazon bought it for one billion dollars from him. Wow. So the, the point the point of this this message is, no matter if you have an idea, you have a thought, a process, and and someone is trying to tell you that it's no good, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. Don't listen to them. As an entrepreneur or even as a regular person, just keep at it. Keep doing what you're doing. That's what your nephew did. That's Ooh. what you did, and that's what I'm going to do with Small Beef right. Pro. Yeah, you yeah, just absolutely. have to put it in your head, yeah. and you put yeah. it out there in the universe, yeah. like you say, and, and trust oh, yeah. in yourself. Just you, do it. You know, I mean, when I first started skiing, I must have fallen, because everybody else knew how I must have rolled and failed and rolled and failed and rolled yeah. and failed, and then the same people that I went skiing with originally at Four years later, after I'd been skiing like every other weekend, yeah. when I went with them, we were up at Snow uh, Snow uh, Summit, and I came down the hill. They're like, "Whoa!" Yeah. And actually, I ski better than they exactly. did now because yeah. I had been putting all that exactly. time in it. Oh, yeah. They were just going once a year, yeah. and I'm going like every other week. Uh-huh. And they're like, "Oh my God, when did you get so good?" Yes. But it's what you put in. Yes. It's what you get back exactly. out. Right? Exactly. And I, and it was fun, and it, and and it tr- and I traveled all over the country and mm-hmm. and I got to see some amazing beautiful places yes. and you have not seen anything beautiful until you're at the very top of a 
mountain, yeah. 10,000 feet up, and yeah. you can look out all See over everything. the entire, it is, a, it's like God speaking to you when you're at the top. Yeah. And it, it's awesome. So yeah. you, you, with all the coal, and you just get him going, oh my God, God is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he built this country right. and this was just thinking, yeah. I can see from here to eternity. Yeah. And that's, it's just all in here. Yeah. It's the experiences, the life moments we get to live out when you get outside of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. That's what it is. And sometimes the comfort zone is, we're born with them, yeah. right? So oh, yeah. you got to come out of them faster than other people. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what's amazing about yeah. it. And sometimes the comfort <laughs> zone is an area that someone tells you that it ought to be that mm. way. That's yes. the comfort zone. Oh, so yeah. when they tell you that, you're going, okay, I'll stay in this whole area because that's what my mom say, that's what my teachers say, that's what these people say. No, you step outside, you test boundaries. Yeah, you test yeah. boundaries, <laughs> and that's what you've been doing. You've oh, been yeah. testing boundaries, <laughs> right, exactly. and it's been working for yeah. you. And she's going to continue to yes. do that, going away, and, oh, yes. and, and with a big group, and uh, for three months. Yes. I mean, that's testing some boundaries. That's oh, phenomenal, yeah. unbelievable. Well, so we I have am five just minutes so left, so Crystal, with meeting you, and it's been. So such a pleasure to meet you, yes. and um, and this has been an incredible interview. I know and, it is, and you just emanate the <laughs> person that a person would want to be. That's oh. right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having the show. This this is I know it's such a wealth of knowledge and encouragement and inspiration to others and like I said it's an honor and a privilege for me to be a part of it and be on today so thank you so much again Gilbert and you just You're presenting welcome. the opportunity and thank you. I know I have six more weeks to just learn and gleam as much as I can from yes. you and all the experience that you've had so you. just being able to share it with any with others so Definitely. thank you and, and now do you we'll, have a phone number you want to give the audience so they can reach you no, just, they can message me on Facebook okay. they can contact me on Facebook I used to tell Dutra um, message me um, again and my um, beauty page, my makeup page is Bold Beauty by Isatel, I S A T E L dot com. That's where they can see the whole sentence line if they want to know more about it. Um, I have my Facebook page with that same name. Just contact me on Facebook with any questions. If you want to talk more, if you want to talk business or you know, development, whatever else, like I, you know, if you want to, if you feel like you want to sew into the three month program, I can talk to you a lot more one on one. That what I can do here on the on the show. I can go more into the details. So yeah, please contact me if you want me to come speak, have a makeup party, and ha- get some free products. You name it. So <laughs> and and then we're gonna get. I'm gonna get the link from you. Um, gonna, yes. So we can. Um, so anybody want to help Isatel get to her three month journey of her humanitarian work, she will be very receptive. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and you'll feel very good about it. So <laughs> so we want to help you. So it was fifty eight hundred dollars you need. To Right. 5800 within two months. So I'm doing fundraisers. I'm, uh, like I said, running my business, just whatever I can do again, fundraising. So if people want to make that tax deductible donation and feel like they're giving back to the poor, the women, the marginalized, the poor around the world, we can send them updates of what's going on. Again, I'd love to talk to people more one on one, not so widely broadcasted about exactly what we're doing because. Um, it's definitely a pioneering work and just hope, hopefully just being able to serve a community on such a deeper level. So yeah, That's phenomenal. Well, actually, they could purchase $5,800 of your product. That would be a good deal. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> I would. Uh, they can more than welcome to do that and have amazing makeup and have Christmas gifts and birthday gifts. And you name it, men, women. You know, products for both. So definitely contact me. <laughs> okay. So, wow, Gilbert, that was this a quick two amazing. hours. Yes, and amazing. thank you for, for inviting us to tell to be a oh, guest yeah. on yes. the show. Oh, I, yes. I really enjoyed this interview. I, I, put out a, I put out a call out on Facebook, and she responded. You know, I said, we're looking for Latinas. We're looking for women-owned businesses. We're looking for minority women-owned business owners to be on our show. And she responded. No, good, good. Well, I'm happy she did. Yeah. And when you are away and you can take pictures, send us pictures, put it on our Facebook page uh, so that we can keep track of what yes, you're doing. definitely. Thank you so much again yeah. for having me. And I'm looking forward to the, vis- the visual audio book oh, that yes. she's going to write. <laughs> Her oh, journey yeah. through life. Oh, because yeah. it's going to be pretty, your life is going to, it's already exciting. So I can imagine what it's going to be from five, ten years from now. Yeah. One day I'll write a book or two. I'm just not, right now I'm not in the, not in the space for that yet. Yeah, that's but. okay. That's 
<laughs> you can do Facebook Live. That's, that's right? Book right there. <laughs> so, Crystal, you want to tell the audience about our Ma- Mastermind program? So, our Mastermind program is going on. We are in the week two, and at the end, we're um, you're going to have your. The goal is for you to have your city and your state certification, um, um, which then you can do minority owned business. You can do uh, receive minority contracts from uh, procurement contracts from the city to state. Um, then you can go on and get your certification from Metro and other entities, LSUSD. And um, this will change how you do business. It will change how much money you make with your business. Mm-hmm. And you will no longer be doing transitional business, but That's you'll right. be doing contractual business. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, Jennifer, yes. who was in our class, yes. our last class, yes. she got the city yesterday. Certification? Certification. All right. Yeah. Congratulations, Jennifer. <laughs> so she's still we waiting for the you state. Could have done it. <laughs> Excellent. So this she's, is a great success story. And so she's looking at, she's getting some RFPs and Excellent. she's really excited. So right. she wants her woman on next. Yeah, okay. She, goes, she just wants that. We're going to help her. So we're, we're going to help, help her get that. And then I met a young lady the other day yeah. um, that has a, a carpeting, a floor and carpeting business. And so she, I've told her about you and okay. the class that you're doing. Perfect, perfect. With the Latina business uh, owners. And so uh, hopefully she'll come on out and, and participate Sounds as well. Sounds good. And, and those of you who are listening who just heard Isa tell, told you about the the Business Management Academy with the National Latina Business Women Association. It's a seven-week class. We just started last week, so that was class one. We've got six more weeks to go. It's every Tuesday from 5.30 to 9 o'clock. It's downtown L.A. at the Plaza, right across from uh, Alvera, Alvera okay. Street and Union Station. So please come on. Give us a call. Uh, you can call us. Uh, call me at 626-533-1186. 626-533-1186. Five three three one one eight six, and we can sign you up for that class. Okay, so I'm gonna we're gonna close out today. A salute to Black women, um, the BBA, the Black uh, uh, Black Business Association. They're honoring um, my co-director Jackie B. Oh, and Alicia White Madison, who is uh, um, the founder of the Bella Network, mm-hmm. and uh, Vivian Bowers, who own who's the owner of Bowers Cleaners, and they've been in business since oh wow, over sixty Quite years. A while. Wow. Yeah, wow. so these are some of the ladies that are going to be honored on March 24th mm-hmm. on a Saturday from 8.30 to 3 o'clock at the L.A. Hotel downtown Los Angeles. Congratulations, ladies. Yeah. You all so, deserve it. So we will see you guys next week. Next week, Friday from 3 to 5 on MorrisMediaLive.com. This is The Business Zone with... Crystal. And Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. We're out. Out. <laughs> Hello. Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his clients' needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance, and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop, or any internet accessible device for data retrieval, and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro, and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30 day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. 
Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186.